we're continuing in Acts chapter 1 and looking at what the early church was doing now after Jesus has ascended into heaven and we said yesterday how they were gathered and they were all praying and we pick up in Acts chapter 1 at verse 15. In those days Peter stood up among the believers together the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said friends the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. This, was, <laughs> this became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language Hakeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his homestead become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it, and let another take his position of overseer. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. There's a couple things in this passage that I hope might be of interest and meaningful to you. Uh, the first is you see Peter and the apostles trying to make sense of an event that made no sense to them, which was Judas betraying Jesus. And when they do that, to try to make sense of it, they turn to the scriptures. And that's something that you can do in your own life as well. When you're facing a puzzling situation, when you're facing a decision, to turn to the scriptures and see, can we find any guidance or direction? The other thing that I find very interesting is that they say to replace Judas, we have to have somebody who has been with us from the very beginning. Someone who goes all the way back to the baptism of John. In other words, we need an old timer. We don't want some new person. We want someone we already know who we're comfortable and familiar with. And then they select these two guys, Joseph called Barsabbas, also called Justice. Why he has three names, I don't know why one isn't sufficient. Why it's either him or Matthias. Then they pray and they say, Lord, show us which one of these two you have chosen after they've narrowed the choice down to just two people. And then they cast lots. They basically roll dice and the lot falls on Matthias, so they make him an apostle, and we never hear of him again. His name is never mentioned again in the New Testament. And what I think the real lesson here is twofold. One, they made a decision that the next leader needed to be someone they all already knew, when in fact, God had something else in mind. And they chose two people, and then they commit themselves, saying, God, which of these two have you chosen? And I would make the argument that the one God had chosen was, in fact, Saul of Tarsus. But God wasn't ready to reveal that yet, and the church moved too soon. Sometimes it's important to wait on the Lord, and sometimes it's important to be open to new people. You may not even know, because that may be the one that God has selected. Stay open to the Spirit moving in your life.